Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining with us uh, on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, it's been rainy, overcast, probably a miserable day for many, but it's a beautiful day in the Lord. And uh, if you have your Bible, you'd like to turn with us. We're going to be reading uh, several passages of scriptures today, but I will start in the book of James chapter 1, and I'll give you a few moments to find James 1. And while you're turning there, let us begin and open with a word of prayer. Father, we bow our heads, we bow our hearts before you. We say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness you've shown towards us this another day. Thank you, Lord. It was not a uh, sunny day, but Lord, it was a beautiful day because we know, Lord, you were in the mix, Father. You're leading, you're guiding, you're directing, bringing healing, Lord, bringing life to those that Lord are seeking. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, this day, you might have your will and way in this few moments. Our hearts might be open. You might speak. You might challenge us, Father. If there be one that does, they may hear our voice this day, Father, that does not yet know you. May their hearts be open and sensitive to your call. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, glad to have you with us today. Pastor Randy, Westside Baptist Church. I uh, want to read a verse from the book of James, chapter 1. James is talking about testing and tempting. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into testing and tempting, but just want to kind of maybe develop a, 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 a thought. Uh, in James chapter 1, verse, tw verse 12, he says this, Happy is the person who remains faithful under trials, because when he succeeds in passing such a test, he will receive as his reward the life which God has promised to those who love him. Verse 13 says, he says, if a person is tempted by such trials, he must not say the temptation come from God, for God cannot be tempted with, by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But a person is tempted when he is drawn away and trapped by his own evil desires. I want to just thought, to, uh, share what I thought with you this afternoon. When life seems to fall apart, now, that being said, the last few days has really been challenging for me. And what's been so challenging about it is this. You know, in life, we make our plans. You know, we kind of kind of set it out in our minds, the things that we want to accomplish, the days that it would take to accomplish, how much time it would take to do each one of those tasks that we have on our agenda. And we kind of set out in that motion. Well, Mine started falling apart, I guess it was, maybe Sunday afternoon. Uh, plans that I had for this week, going to do a mission trip. Well, weather's not allowed that to happen. Uh, can't put on roofing and it rainy. Well, you could, but uh, you don't need to tear a roof off and have it exposed to weather. So as we start off on our mission trip, never really got off. Just started packing a few things. And so the weather, it just changed. And so when, when, when life seems to be falling apart, and that's kind of the way it started off with me on Sunday, well, then I started making plans. And Monday, the things that I had said, well, I'm not going on a mission trip. These are the things that I'll get done. Uh, good thing I didn't plan a whole lot for Monday because Monday was one of those days that is just, again, kind of nasty, not getting much done. Well, Tuesday, when I said, okay, I will do thus and thus, uh, never, ever say what you will or what you won't do. You make your plans, and life has a tendency to fall apart on you. I, I like what the writer of Proverbs, what he says. The writer of Proverbs 16 and 9, he says, the heart of man plans his way. And, and that's exactly what we do. We like to make plans. And, and you know, we'll, we'll throw in that little catch there, if the Lord will. And, and you know, we love to make our plans, but he says the heart of man plans his ways. And you know, that's exactly what we do. We think through the process. We think what we want to accomplish, how we want to do it, how long it's going to take, when we'll be done. And we start in our agenda. So this the heart, our desires. It's us wanting to do. But then you notice what he says, and he finishes up that verse in uh, Proverbs 16 and 9. He says, but the Lord establishes his steps. And so whatever we are doing, 
we need to put him first. We need to allow him to have leadership, let him have guidance. You know, a lot of times we make plans and we make our plans without consulting the Father. And many times when we make those plans, that's when our plans, <laughs> it just seems to fall apart on us, you know. And, and that's what I, I, maybe I did. And, and there was a time that I just wouldn't make a plan. And I just get up and say, okay, whatever God wants to happen to this day, then I just kind of cast it to the wind. And God's going to, he's just going to use this day for his glory. And, and you know, it's amazing. He brings some great things out of days like that. Because here's what I have learned. When we make plans and it falls apart, it seems our life falls apart. All of a sudden, we're angry. We're upset. We're, we're just distraught. But I'm glad to report to you today, when we make our plans and we consult the Lord first, you know, when my plans fell apart first thing yesterday morning, I, I didn't get upset. I, I didn't fall apart. Here's what I said. It, it's just Tuesday. Wednesday will come, the Lord willing. And, and if it's ready on Wednesday, then we'll do what we're going to do it on Wednesday. If not, Next Tuesday, next, it'll be fine. And so I've come to understand to allow the Lord to establish, him to establish my steps and, and whatever comes out of it, he'll get glory, he'll get honor, he'll get praise. But also in the book of Nahum, chapter one, verse seven, it says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. And so here's what we've come to understand. When we will take refuge in him, we will allow him to be our shield, our buckle. When we allow him to go before us, we allow him to light the path that we are walking on. When we allow him to give us direction, you know what happens? He, he will help us through our days of trouble. He, he knows and we can take refuge in him. When life falls apart, I can't take refuge in myself because when I fall apart and, and life seems to be falling apart and I just seem to get bumfuzzled and y'all understand bumfuzzled, I just I just throw my hands up. But when I rest in him and, and I let him lead and guide and I take refuge, I take security, I take shelter, I take comfort in him. That's what he says in Nahum 1-7. But then Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11, 12, 13 and we all probably know the first verse. He says, for I know, and this is God speaking, I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans for your good or welfare and not for evil. And so whatever God has planned for us, when we will rest in the Lord and we will allow him to establish our ways, you know what? Our days will come out a whole lot brighter. You know, we don't fall apart. We don't get upset. We don't get mad. We don't kick the dog. We don't holler at the kids. We don't squall at our wives or our husbands. We just rest in the Lord because he, he is leading our way and he has a plan of good and welfare and not of evil. He says to give to you a future and a hope. He says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And that's what we should be doing. We should be seeking the face of God daily. We should open up our day with prayer before the Father. Father, you know what's before me today. You know what's all going to transpire in my life. And so, Father, prepare my heart to speak, to receive, to give, to re whatever you want to do today in me, Lord, me, Lord, then open me, prepare me. And that's the way we should start our days. Instead of making our plans, and when our plans don't come out the way we thought, then we fall apart. We get angry, and we lose ourselves in the midst of it. Psalms Chapter three, verse three, the writer says this, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But you, O Lord, you're my shield. You're the one that guards me. All those terrors that come by me, you're the one that guards, you're the one that protects me. You're all about me. Your glory is about me. He says, and you are the lifter of my head. I'm glad that when I am down, out, and discouraged, he always comes. He lifts my heart. He lifts my brow. He lifts my head that I will give him glory. I will give him honor. I will give him praise. But a last verse I want to share with you, Psalms 119 and verse 50. He says this, 
This is my comfort in my afflictions. When my days fall apart, when it seems like my world is falling apart, when it seems like nothing is going right, everything could go wrong seems to be going wrong. He says, this is my comfort in my afflictions, in all my troubles, in all my heartaches, that your promises give me life. The promises, the word of God. And that is, his promises are yea and yea. And so when we rest in his promises, we rest in his word. We believe what his word says to us, and we abide in that word. We walk in that word. We live in that word. Here's what happens. We come to understand that in his promises, they give us life. They give us enjoyment. They give us peace. They give us comfort. Friends, today, when your life seems to be falling apart, go to the source of life. Go to the comforter. Go to the one who can give us peace, and that is Christ Jesus. Friends, today, if you don't know him, you need to know him because I'm satisfied to say today that many times in our lives, when we don't acknowledge him, our lives seems to fall apart on a regular basis. But with him and him leading and guiding and us trusting and resting in his word, I will assure you, friends, only when you allow it does your life fall all apart. But when you rest in him, you will find safety, you will find instructions, you will find direction, you will find whatever you need in him, and your days will be brighter. God bless you. Pray with us as we close. Father, we just bow our heads, we bow our hearts, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, when life does throw us a curve, when life seems to fall apart, and we are not prepared for it because we didn't spend time with you and your word, we didn't spend time in your presence, praying and meditating. Father, when we do those things, Father, and life throws us a curve, Father, I am so glad that I can fall back on you and I can rest in the assurance that you are my strength, you are my shield, you are my buckle, you are my stronghold. And so, Father, I am glad to know that I can rest in you today. And so, Father, today, if there's one that don't know you, may you touch their hearts and help them to come to understand without you, life is a struggle. And when we come to you, Lord, we will still have our moments, but life is so much brighter because you are the hope of glory living and reigning inside of us. Father, if there's one that is listening today that is weary and well doing, their, their, their life is in chaos because they have not rested in you, Father, speak to their hearts, draw them close to your side, Bless them, Father, we pray. Father, again today, we pray for our first responders, those who are out on the front line, Father, doctors, nurses, paramedics, firemen, police, Lord, whatever line of work they may be in. And Father, I think about so many that are working in and in, in trying to open a restaurant and trying to run restaurants and those that are working in the, in, in the meat packing industry, Lord, slaughterhouse, and anywhere they may be, Lord. And they're trying to keep America going, Lord, trying to keep us, Lord, uh, provided for. Father, I pray for all those, Lord, that you might keep them safe. You might give them comfort. You might instill in their hearts, Lord, to rest in you. And Father, I pray, Lord, that this uh, pandemic will soon come to a close and we, the people of God, can join together around the word of God in the house of God, that we can worship and we can celebrate our Lord and our Savior these things we ask in the strong and mighty name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, friend. I love you, and Jesus loves you. He loves you more than you love yourself. And so trust him today. God bless you. Have a great day.